All right, so we're going to get into a new sort here, sort two of the blue book for derivational relations, words their way. In this video, we'll tell you about the meanings of these prefixes, prefixes and some of the words in this sort. So let's get into it. So we have basically opposite um, prefixes with the same meanings uh, for two, pre and four have the same meanings, post and after have the same meanings. And you've probably heard of these before. Pre and four both mean before. In post and after mean, well, after. So we've used these before in school, like pre-test and post-test. You should know those. Or you can probably figure out pre-war and post-war on your own what those mean. But let's break down a few of these that you might not know the meanings to. Starting with prehistoric. And prehistoric, using the word history as the base word, is the time before writing was invented. So the first type of writing was uh, a little more than 5,000 years ago in a place called Mesopotamia, which is now Iraq. But anything before that, there was no record of it because people, there was no writing. So that's called prehistoric times. Next up, precede means to come or occur before. So for example, um, PE class precedes lunch. And next, let's do foreman, which actually this word doesn't really fit the pattern or the uh, prefix. But this actually refers to the person in charge of a factory or a construction site is the foreman. And then next, forefathers. Forefathers refers to your ancestors or past generations of a family. So your great grandmother and grandfather are your forefathers, your ancestors. And then the word foretell can be defined with another one of your words, which is predict. To foretell is to predict. Now, this next word, you might see this and pronounce it preposition, looking at the base word and the prefix. It's actually pronounced preposition. And this is actually a part of speech. So, you know, we have nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Prepositions are another part of speech or another type of word. And they include words like in, at, from, by, with, on. Those are a few examples, um, very common words. And you might hear the term prepositional phrase. So that's a preposition, and you're usually using a noun connected to it to show the relationship. So in the kitchen, with my brother, by my desk, um, at the store. Those would be prepositional phrases where you're using a preposition and connecting it to other words. Okay, let's do a couple more, and then we're going to talk about some book words you have here. So, so you might know postpone, but in, just in case, it's to move something to a later date. And post date is when you write a later date on something because you won't be using it until later. And then uh, we're just going to break down a couple other things here, and then we're done. So. Just a note about pre-season and post-season. That season is not talking about summer, spring, winter, fall. It's discussing a sports season. So like before the baseball season is the pre-season. After basketball season is the post-season. So just to clarify that, to make sure you understand. And then last, let's talk about these book words. So first of all, a note about pronunciation. It's preface, not preface, but preface or foreword. Basically the same meaning, which is an introduction to a book. So a note before the book actually starts. And then afterward is going to be a conclusion to a book. And I probably would like to give you a couple more words you may have heard connected to books that are very similar. You may have heard of these words, prologue and epilogue, which is also before and after a book. So especially in fiction, the prologue is a story before the main story, and the epilogue would be the story after the main story. So not all books have these, of course, but sometimes the author wants to give you a little bit of background information, so they'll have a prologue, and sometimes they want to tell you what happened, kind of when the story ended, which is called an epilogue. And I have, there's one word I forgot, so please, last one, which is foresight, which is the ability to predict and prepare for the future. 
um, and not predict like crystal ball, like magic, but just thinking about what might happen and being ready for it. If you can do that, you have good foresight. So this is it, sort two. Thank you and goodbye.